So now let's set up the left and right sliding links. If you remember, those are these two links over here. We actually want to make sure that they appear in the middle of the carousel, like they, not at the top here, but vertically if we want it to be in the center here. So now let's go and set that up. Okay, and how we do that is, we're actually going to say, calculate the height of that actually, that one of those links. We want to get the height of this, and then take the height of this whole left panel over here, subtract this height from it, then divide it by two. When we do that, we'll get the position of where this element has to be. So first we get the height of the left link. We say var link height equals to parent dot left link dot height. So now that we've got the height of the left link, we want to get the height of wherever the container of the left link is. And how we do that is we say var left link container container height equal to if you remember the left link is contained inside the carousel inner so if we want to get the height of the container for the left link we just get the height for the carousel inner so since we have the carousel inner stored in the parent say parent dot carousel inner dot height so now let's set the height of wherever the left link has to be. Sorry, not the height. Let's set the position of wherever the left link has to be. So we say parent dot left link dot css. So let, now we pass in the properties. So so what we want to do is we say the top of left link has to be this left link container minus height of the left link divided by two so let me just make sure that that's clear for you guys so this left link container is height is this height that we're looking at here and then the left links height is whatever the height of this is so when we say this height minus this height divided by two that will give us something about half of this container here so we say push make sure the top of this left link here is at whatever height that we have calculated so we say left link container height minus link height put that in brackets and then divided by two okay so but if you remember whatever the CSS element top here expects for us to have a pixel appended to whatever we're setting to top so we say plus and then we say px okay that seems about right so let's do that for the right link as well so let's copy this and since the left and the right link they both need to be at the same height in whatever they're being positioned whatever container they're being positioned in so we can apply the same rules to both of them so we say parent dot right link and we don't need to calculate left link container and sorry right link container height and right link height since they both have the same attribute so now let's go back to our browser and refresh and see if that's fine okay it seems like it didn't work let us see what happened actually go back to our chrome developer tools refresh okay what's it saying it's saying slide left isn't a function okay let's go and fix that quickly let's just go and comment that out for now because it seems that when that throws up an error it doesn't do what we want these to do so going back to our file let's see where slide left is being called okay let's just comment this out for now go back to our firefox and refresh okay that seems to fix this so now that we know that this is in order let's go and add event handlers to our left and right so when it's clicked when the right is clicked this carousel is slided to the left and when the left link is clicked this carousel is slided to the right okay, let's go and hook those up so we'll uncomment this parent dot slide left again so now that we've set up the CSS that's the position of these elements we're going to add event handlers for when they are clicked so we'll say dot on click 
we'll pass in an anonymous function that just calls so now what actually if you see the we're targeting left link so when we click on left link we want it to slide to the right so what we're going to call is the slide right function which actually we don't have yet but just after this we're going to go and write those slide left and slide right because it seems like it's causing up a bit of trouble by just calling it and without defining it so when you click on left link we're going to call parent dot slide right and guys when when you call a function inside of an anonymous function basically when you say this it basically it this means that whatever the namespace of this function is so if we want to force the namespace of this slide right function which we have yet to write if you want to give it actually uh, define its this value we actually can say something like parent dot call and then sorry not parent dot call we say parent dot slide right dot call and then we can we can when we use this call function that means that whatever parameter we passed in as the first parameter here will represent whatever this means inside of the slide right function so we want that this of slide right function to mean to refer to this parent element here so we just passed in pass in parent as the first argument inside of call so we say parent so we do likewise we do the same for when the right link has been clicked so we just add an event handler to slide right link as well click so we say dot on click passing an anonymous function so we say parent dot slide left so when the right link has been clicked as you can see here we want to do the opposite of what happens when this is clicked right link clicked we want to slide it to the left so instead of calling slide right we call slide left so we say slide left dot call we want to actually override that this for slide left as well so we pass in parent okay so now that we've called the right functions when the right and left link has been clicked we're actually going to now go and define what slide left and slide right are so we'll go back and say ls advanced slider dot prototype dot slide left equal to a function and since we've overwritten the this attribute of this function of the function here we know that when we say this we know that it's referring to the parent element because we passed in parent so we say parent equals to this if we hadn't done what we did up here by passing parent this will only refer to that this function here it wouldn't be able to refer to parent because we wanted access to parent so that's why we did that here okay so now what we're going to do next is we're going to call our jQuery animate function and how we do that is we say parent dot what we're going to animate is the wrapper I'll just show you quickly so this wrapper here which contains all of these images when we clicked on right now that we're writing the slide left function we want that whole wrapper to slide to the left so we're going to take that wrapper and call the jQuery animation function on it and then the length of the duration of that sliding will be whatever you passed in as wait time so we're going to say parent dot wrapper dot animate so we actually can use the CSS function because whatever you use as CSS whatever you pass to the CSS function for jQuery you can pass the same in animate it's just that animate has is more powerful than CSS 